Hi everyone, and welcome back to Catch Up at the Well. Uh, today I'm Rupert, and today we have I have with me two ladies, Himdre and Florence, and we will be sharing our thoughts, our takeaway, and some applications from Second Samuel chapter twenty. So let me hand this time over to Himdre, and uh, let's hear from her. Okay, so when I read Second Samuel uh, chapter twenty, the key thing that struck me was how David treated Joab. So Joab was uh, David's uh, commander of the army. Mm. And so I think in order to explain uh, what I felt, I need to go back a little bit. So if we read Second Samuel, uh, the earlier chapters, you find that uh, Joab actually featured quite prominently in two episodes at least. So the first one was when David uh, made Bathsheba pregnant. And then he, he, sent, he got uh, Joab to send uh, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, home, hoping that Uriah would sleep with his wife and then, you know, uh, nobody would know that uh, David was a father. And Uriah didn't, right? So then David uh, sent a message to Uriah, uh, to Joab, asking Joab to put Uriah at the, where it was, uh, the fighting was the fiercest, and then to withdraw so that uh, Uriah would get killed. And so Joab obeyed, he did it, right? But obviously he knew what David had done, you know? And then um, the next uh, key episode was uh, during the case of Absalom. When Absalom was pursuing uh, David, Joab took the army and then went after Absalom and David said, don't kill my son. But Joab went ahead and killed Absalom because I think he, he probably realised that if Absalom was going to kill David, he as the commander of the army had to protect David and hence kill him, right? And um, so I think he decided to do something that he felt was the right thing to do, you know, to protect David. And after that, uh, David was so upset, he was mourning, and uh, the, the army's victory in the end became like a mourning. So, so then Joab went to David and chided him actually and said, how can you do this? You know, your men risked their lives for you, and here you are, you know, you, you are mourning. Go out and encourage them. And David listened to him. So based on this, I thought Joab was someone who was loyal to David and he had the courage to speak to David and uh, to reproach him uh, if they okay, when the occasion required it. And also he was a very able and respected commander. So then uh, we look at chapter 20, right? Chapter 20 talks about Sheba, this troublemaker that um, uh, got the people to turn away, uh, the people of Israel to turn away from David. And um, so... Then we look at chapter, we look at verse 4, where David asked Amasa to go and summon the men of Judah to come. Mm. Now, the um, question is, why didn't David ask Joab? You know, he actually bypassed Joab in this case. And Amasa actually was someone who betrayed David earlier on mm. and went over to Absalom. And here, David is asking Amasa and not Joab. And then, uh, Amasa didn't come back within three days. So then David asked Abishai to lead the army and go and pursue Sheba. But why Abishai? Right? Abishai uh, was um, Joab's brother, but not, not the more able leader. So why not Joab? You know? But in the end, when you read, come to the end of chapter 20, we find that it was Joab who actually got Sheba killed, right? And hence uh, got David protected. So my question was, why? You know, that was the thing that actually um, uh, caused me to think. And I was wondering whether um, David knew that Joab knew what he had done before with, uh, with uh, Uriah. Mm. And there was always a little bit of a guilty feeling, right? And so then that might have clouded his judgment, clouded the way he picked somebody. Uh, it could be uh, that maybe he, didn't, he was a bit unhappy with uh, Joab's courage to chide him you know, maybe other preconceived ideas. So there's one then, um, in this case, was David actually letting all these things cloud his judgment and not um, asking the best person to do the job, someone that God has placed uh, before him to, to do, to carry out the task. Okay, so how can, is there any application? So for me, when I read that, right, um, my takeaway really was that um, I asked myself, you know, and I, I told God that to open my eyes to see who He has brought to me, 
to help me or to work with me. Mm. And these may be people who work very differently from me. You know, they may be people I don't expect <laughs> to be my partner mm. or someone to who would help me. Yeah. But I need to um, I need to learn to look at. Uh, people, their, their different facets, look at their gifts, their qualities, and know that God uses different people, right? The people He brings to me, um, obviously a lot of people will not be like me, you know, work different ways, different personalities, but really to, to learn to, to see these people for who God um, uh, wants them to be and uh, what God wants them to do with me and for me. Okay. What, what, what I thought about this passage is that, you know, that it was actually towards the end. There was a bit of dissension and there was a bit of rebellion. You know, Joab and uh, he wanting to, 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 to kill Sheba, you know. But, and in spite of the fact that, you know, he was well trusted by, by, by David, there's also cause for rebellion. And that is something that we all, in our, in our walk with God, we will rebel against, sometimes against authority. But we have to be very discerning and always seek God and say, look, where am I going from here? You have put me in this environment to work together with other people, right? And to make use of them. But if there's rebellion, what do I do? Do I follow them? Or do I just still go and see what God wants me? Because whatever we do, we cannot lose sight that God is in control. He is sovereign. He, he, everything he, it's leading up to what He wants for all of us. You see, like how, you know, even though Joab was the, the, the person in control of, uh, well, he was David's right-hand man. You know, he, he, he went and obeyed David. But when it came to, to killing um, Sheba, he, I think he didn't think anything about it. It's just getting rid of, of somebody. But the, the, there was this lady, like you mentioned a few, some time ago, that um, this lady from the city, right? She said, don't destroy the city, you know? I, she will, eventually what she did, she, she threw over Sheba's head. The city was saved, right? So in whatever we do, we must not just go with the flow, okay? Just go with what God's Word leads us to do. That, that's my whole, whole take here. There is rebellion, right? There is rebellion that, that comes on because of the choice of leaders. But we must always stay focused on what God wants for us. He is sovereign. He is in charge. I have the same like takeaway with us, you know, Florence, because um, there was this insurrection. I think the whole chapter talks about insurrection, right? And I think uh, Sheba took advantage of of already what happened, right? Absalom already rebelled against David, and there was this insurrection. But as I read this chapter, what what I felt uh, my takeaway was there were people here that had to make choices. Whose side are they going to take? Right? Whether they're going to follow the rebellion or stick with David. Right? And then you realize that there were a group of people who decided that they were not going with Sheba. They're going to uh, take, uh, stay with David and be faithful to, to God's call on this man's life. And so for me, uh, I realized that even in our walk with God, even in our journey with God, there'll be times when we have to make decisions like that. There are times when even people around us may persuade us or give us an option, right? Another option. But I feel that at the end of it, what I learned from this is it's important for us to know what to choose. Right? When times like that, I think it's important for us to always choose God, always choose the sight of the Lord. Right, and I think I agree with you even in terms of like leadership and all that and things may happen even in our lives or whatever with people we work with. I think it's important like you said, um, who do you work with? They are all different facets but yet I believe ultimately our choices should be in line with what God wants. 
and my take is that, and, and as I was preparing this, the, the whole thing about from Matthew chapter 25 came to me, right? That's where the separation of the goats and the sheep, right? And, and at the end, it says when the, the coming of the Lord and the final, this is the final judgment, right? When, when the Lord comes, there will be this separation. And the separation talks about the goat and the sheep, right? And what's the difference is that it's basically the sheep are those who chose to follow the Lord chose to do His will, chose to be obedient to Him, whereas the goats are those who decided to rebel or do otherwise. So that's my takeaway. And so the application for me that in, in my journey with the Lord and in my walk with the Lord, that, that no matter what, even though the persuasion may be good, right, to choose another path, I think ultimately for me is that uh, I must always decide to take the side of God. And David was the chosen king. Mm -hmm. There was no other option because God chose him. Therefore, if they chose otherwise or they chose to rise up and raise another king, that would be, in a sense, the goats. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my takeaway and uh, I thought, uh, and I agree with you as well, your thoughts. And, and, and so it boils down to our decisions in life. You know? Even when you shared about you know, people working with you, and not looking at the norm, you know, or the certain way that we think and we look at. And I think ultimately it's about how the decisions that we make in life is very important. Yeah. You know, that everything has to align to what God wants. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and so, I, I, I don't know, do you, do you have any other thoughts? You yeah, I think um, it's like, you know, we, you may have certain plans, things you want to do, they may sound like they're the best, but end of the day, really, if God says do something else, do uh, do differently, then we need to go with Him. Yeah. Yeah. And then here it's really obedient of the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to follow God? Are you going to follow man? Yeah. You know, and yeah. and you know, I th and, and I think Paul has also mentioned in in Romans and, and um, that what has is that uh, there will be uh, dissensions in the church. There will be uh, uprisings, but we must just remain focused. It is God we serve, mm. you know? Mm. And the only way is to continue with the Word. Yeah. And we, you know, I mean, you know, the Old Testament is something that we all have to read because it leads up to the New Testament. Yeah. You know, the Bible does not stand, stand on its own on just one chapter or, or one book that we like. Yeah. And I like what you say because sometimes we think that the Old Testament is archaic. Yeah. It's just stories of old. But even with today's chapter, we realize that there are lessons in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. There are yeah. lessons through the stories yeah. and the incidents in the Old Testament that we can apply to our life in the present time. Mm -hmm. And so I think it encourages us, I think, mm -hmm. you know, to not just read the New Testament. Uh, but also to have a whole of the Old Testament because uh, it's the complete Bible that is the complete counsel of God. And, and, and as Him just says, you know, we work together with each other. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's, it, it is hard that mm -hmm. there are differences, mm -hmm. but we work together because it is God's goal that's our ultimate, uh, our ultimate goal too. Yeah. You know, and we, we, all, we, all, we all work together we all have to accept each other. But of course, if somebody goes against the word, then we, we, we really stand up right mm -hmm. and say, no, this is not what the word is. Yeah. And we have the courage to say that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and you mentioned about the lady, right? The lady yeah. who mm. to chop off his head and yeah. hung it outside yeah. the yeah. city, right? Um, it also, it's also struck something in my heart that, you know, many times we, we think that we are the ones who need to, to do the job. Mm -hmm. But uh, we all know this phrase that vengeance belongs to the Lord, right? He is the one who will ultimately take up the battle. He is the one who will set things right. And so I, I also realized that we just need to trust that the Lord who is in control of all things mm -hmm. will do what He needs to do at the right time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may not be through us, maybe through other circumstances, maybe through other situations, and we need not take it in on onto ourselves to try to resolve everything. Mm -hmm. 
and the Lord will work out something as we trust Him. I mean, that's another thing, right? Because, I mean, Joab could have done it, or David could have done it himself, mm. but yet this lady rose up and said, let me do it, you know? And you think about it, right, in those days, here is this lady, actually she saved her city, didn't she? <laughs> right? You know, she it's had the courage to stand yeah. up to yeah. do a commander of the army and say, yes. Don't do this, right? What do you want? Okay, I give you the Joab's head. I mean, I give you Sheba's head. Right. Yeah. Mm. Another lesson also, as you shared, right, is like, she's a commoner. Mm. Yeah. She mm. was not even part not of even the military. military. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. But what you said was courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She had the courage to stand up to, to help David and also to protect her city. Yes. Yeah. You know? I think, and I think for her, you, you, where she was, there were the peop other people there in that city. Mm. And it didn't stop her, you know. She didn't say, oh, you know. She, I mean, she, she really went, uh, this is what you call, uh, to rise up in faith. Uh. Yes. Yeah. Ferocious courage. Yeah, and I like it about this thing, right? And uh, she, just, she just went and did it. Mm. Um, and they say, well, wait for somebody else to do it. Yeah. Right. Someone's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and God makes use of anybody. See, you know, throughout this whole chapter, we talk about all the, his commanders, his, the, 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 the people who were leading the armies. Mm -hmm. But who saved the day? It was just this lady who said, do not destroy my city, who didn't want her city to be destroyed. Yeah. And she stood up mm -hmm. and she said, okay, I hand him to you. So if God could stir a, a nobody in a sense yes. to do this. I think every one of us can be used by God yes. to do His purposes yeah. and His plans. So it's whether you're willing. Yes, yes. Yeah. and have the courage yeah. to do whatever God has called you to do. And and the amazing thing, I don't, I don't, I don't think she really uh, realized the vastness of of the outcome yeah. of her obedience or her mm -hmm. act. I mean, mm. to her, it's like, okay, this guy is troubling the nation. I'm just going to do this. Mm. But the outcome was so great. I mean, I, I, maybe after that, then she realized, oh, yeah. you know, I saved the city. Yeah. 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 You know, so, so, wow. Well, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so, thank you, ladies. Thank um, you, yeah, thank you. For sharing your thoughts. And uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we will now close in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the time that we had and, and, and we thank you, Lord, for the richness of your word. Lord, each time when we go into your word, Lord, there are so many things that we can glean from it. And we thank you that your word is not so, something that is distant from us. It's something that is so personal as well. Lord, even as we shared our thoughts and we talked about the, the things that we can apply in our lives, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you are a very personal God who speaks to us, even to this day, through your written word. So Father, I pray that we will be encouraged to continue reading your word and allow you to speak to us. Whether it's from the Old Testament or the New Testament, Lord, you have a voice and you're a God who speaks. And so we commit our hearts to you and we pray that as we continue this journey of reading the Bible, Lord, that we will know that if we are open to hear you. Lord, you will surely speak to us. Thank you for our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So friends, uh, thank you for joining us and I pray that you would have been blessed by what we shared today and I, I'm sure you also have your personal takeaways when you read uh, 2 Samuel 20. So look forward to the next um, D-Well, catch up at D-Well on the 10th of May. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.